In 1958, in the town of Cheshire, Connecticut, Cheshire High School held its annual Military Day, where representatives of each branch of the U.S. Armed Forces gave presentations to the assembled students explaining the virtues of service to their country. The junior and senior boys in attendance proved an unruly bunch, hooting catcalls and whistles at the Army, Navy, and Air Force recruiters as they spoke. Finally, a crusty Marine gunnery sergeant rose and glared at the room. There's no one here worthy of being a United States Marine, he growled at the students. I'm deplored that the faculty in the back of the room would let the students carry on like this. There isn't anybody here I want in my Marine Corps. Shortly after he finished scolding the crowd, several students swarmed the gunny, eager to learn more about the Corps, one of whom was Cheshire's senior class president, Harvey Barnum, Jr., Barney, as he would come to be known as, filled out his paperwork to enlist as a senior and join the platoon leadership class when he enrolled at St. Anselm College the following school year. Seven years later, now First Lieutenant Barnum arrived in Vietnam as part of the 2nd Battalion, 9th Marines. On the morning of December 18, 1965, his battalion was moving through heavy overgrowth south of Da Nang when suddenly the entire area exploded with enemy fire. Barnum's company commander and his radio man immediately went down, and the entire company of about 110 men was cut off from the rest of the battalion. After trying in vain to save his commander, Barnum removed the radio from its operator, strapped it to his back, and took command of the company. Outnumbered about 10 to 1 by North Vietnamese regulars, Barnum led a fierce counterattack against the enemy machine guns that pinned them down, calling in artillery fire on their positions. After nearly eight hours of continuous fighting, the battalion commander radioed Barnum that it would be impossible to rescue the stranded Marines. Knowing that they would be wiped out if they tried to hold out through the night, Lieutenant Barnum ordered the company's engineers to blow a space in the heavy tree cover for helicopters to land to evacuate the dead and wounded. Radioing the helicopter pilot his position, Barnum received the response that the area was too hot with enemy fire for him to land. Infuriated, Barnum, radio strapped to his back, walked out into the clearing and said, Look down here where I am standing. If I can stand here, by God, you can land here. Despite heavy fire, the helicopter did land and evacuated the wounded. Lieutenant Barnum, his force dwindling, ordered the remaining Marines to move out in fire team rushes throughout the enemy lines and cross more than 500 yards of ground covered by the enemy to rejoin the rest of the battalion before dusk. For his valor in combat, Lieutenant Barnum's commanding general recommended him for the Medal of Honor two days later. On February 27, 1967, he was presented the U.S. military's highest honor by the Secretary of the Navy, the fourth Marine to receive the award for valor in Vietnam. After receiving the medal, Lieutenant Barnum accepted a position as a military aide in Washington on one condition, that he be allowed to choose his next assignment. When the time came, he informed his superiors that he wanted to return to Vietnam, becoming the first man who received the Medal of Honor to return to duty there. Colonel Barnum retired from the Marine Corps in 1989 after serving more than 27 years. He later returned to the Pentagon to serve as a Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy. To this day, he remains one of the most popular veterans of his beloved Marine Corps.